Barbara Charlene Jordan, February 21, 1936 to January 17, 1996, was an American lawyer, educator, and politician who was a leader of the civil rights movement. A Democrat, she was the first African American elected to the Texas Senate after Reconstruction, the first Southern African American woman elected to the United States House of Representatives. She was best known for her eloquent opening statement at the House Judiciary Committee hearings during the impeachment process against Richard Nixon, and as the first African American as well as the first woman to deliver a keynote address at a Democratic National Convention. She received the Presidential Medal of Freedom, among numerous other honors. She was a member of the Peabody Awards Board of Jurors from 1978 to 1980. She was the first African American woman to be buried in the Texas State Cemetery. Jordan's work as chair of the U.S. Commission on Immigration Reform, which recommended reducing legal immigration by about one third, is frequently cited by American immigration restrictionists. Topic: <laughs> Early life. Barbara Charlene Jordan was born in Houston, Texas's fourth ward. Jordan's childhood was centered on church life. Her mother was Arline Patton Jordan, a teacher in the church, and her father was Benjamin Jordan, a Baptist preacher. Barbara Jordan was the youngest of three children, with siblings Rose Mary Jordan McGowan and Benny Jordan Cresswell 1933-2000. Jordan attended Roberson Elementary School. She graduated from Phyllis Wheatley High School in 1952 with honors. Jordan credited a speech she heard in her high school years by Edith S. Sampson with inspiring her to become an attorney. Because of segregation, she could not attend the University of Texas at Austin and instead chose Texas Southern University, an historically black institution, majoring in political science and history. At Texas Southern University, Jordan was a national champion debater, defeating opponents from Yale and Brown and tying Harvard University. She graduated magna cum laude in 1956. At Texas Southern University, she pledged Delta Sigma Theta sorority. She attended Boston University School of Law, and graduating in 1959. <laughs> career Jordan taught political science at Tuskegee Institute in Alabama for a year. In 1960, she returned to Houston and started a private law practice. Jordan campaigned unsuccessfully in 1962 and 1964 for the Texas House of Representatives. She won a seat in the Texas Senate in 1966, becoming the first African American state senator since 1883 and the first black woman to serve in that body. Re-elected to a full term in the Texas Senate in 1968, she served until 1972. She was the first African-American female to serve as president pro tem of the state Senate and served one day, June 10, 1972, as acting governor of Texas. To date Jordan is the only African-American woman to serve as governor of a state excluding lieutenant governors. During her time in the Texas legislature, Jordan sponsored or co-sponsored some 70 bills. In 1972, she was elected to the U.S. House of Representatives, the first woman elected in her own right to represent Texas in the House. She received extensive support from former President Lyndon B. Johnson, who helped her secure a position on the House Judiciary Committee. In 1974, she made an influential televised speech before the House Judiciary Committee supporting the impeachment of President Richard Nixon, Johnson's successor as president. In 1975, she was appointed by Carl Albert, then Speaker of the United States House of Representatives, to the Democratic Steering and Policy Committee. In 1976, Jordan, mentioned as a possible running mate to Jimmy Carter of Georgia, became instead the first African-American woman to deliver a keynote address at the Democratic National Convention. Despite not being a candidate, Jordan received one delegate vote 0.03% for president at the convention. Jordan retired from politics in 1979 and became an adjunct professor teaching ethics at the University of Texas at Austin Lyndon B. Johnson School of Public Affairs. She was again a keynote speaker at the Democratic National Convention in 1992. In 1994, Clinton awarded her the Presidential Medal of Freedom and the NAACP presented her with the Spingarn Medal. She was honored many times and was given over 20 honorary degrees from institutions across the country, including Harvard and Princeton, and was elected to the Texas and National Women's Halls of Fame. 
Statement on the Articles of Impeachment On July 25, 1974, Jordan delivered a 15-minute televised speech in front of the members of the U.S. House Judiciary Committee. She presented an opening speech during the hearings that were part of the impeachment process against Richard Nixon. This speech is thought to be one of the best speeches of the 20th century. Throughout her speech, Jordan strongly stood by the Constitution of the United States. She defended the checks and balances system, which was set in place to inhibit any politician from abusing their power. Jordan never flat out said that she wanted Nixon impeached, but rather subtly and cleverly implied her thoughts. She simply stated facts that proved Nixon to be untrustworthy and heavily involved in illegal situations, and quoted the drafters of the Constitution in order to argue that actions like Nixon's during the scandal corresponded with their understanding of impeachable offenses. She protested that the Watergate scandal will forever ruin the trust American citizens have for their government. This powerful and influential statement earned Jordan national praise for her rhetoric, morals, and wisdom. Topic. Legislation Jordan supported the Community Reinvestment Act of 1977, legislation that required banks to lend and make services available to underserved poor and minority communities. She supported the renewal of the Voting Rights Act of 1965 and expansion of that act to cover language minorities. This extended protection to Hispanics in Texas and was opposed by Texas Governor Dolph Briscoe and Secretary of State Mark White. She also authored an act that ended federal authorization of price fixing by manufacturers. During Jordan's tenure as a congresswoman she sponsored or co-sponsored over 300 bills or resolutions, several of which are still in effect today as law. U.S. Commission on Immigration Reform From 1994 until her death, Jordan chaired the U.S. Commission on Immigration Reform. The commission recommended that total immigration be cut be by one-third to approximately 550,000 per year. The commission supported increasing enforcement against illegal immigrants and their employers, eliminating visa preferences for siblings and adult children of U.S. citizens, and ending unskilled immigration except for refugees and nuclear families. The commission's report to Congress said that it was a right and responsibility of a democratic society to manage immigration so that it serves the national interest," concluded that, "...legal immigration has strengthened and can continue to strengthen this country," and decry d hostility and discrimination against immigrants is antithetical to the traditions and interests of the country. Quote, the Commission recommended that the United States reduce the number of refugees admitted annually to 50,000 this level would be lifted during emergencies. Personal life Jordan's companion of approximately 20 years was Nancy Earle, an educational psychologist, whom she met on a camping trip in the late 1960s. Jordan's sexual orientation has never been determined, but some sources list her as a lesbian. If so, she would have been the first lesbian known to have been elected to the United States Congress or to address a Democratic National Convention. Earl was an occasional speech writer for Jordan, and later was a caregiver when Jordan began to suffer from multiple sclerosis in 1973. In the cut radio documentary Rediscovering Barbara Jordan, President Bill Clinton said that he wanted to nominate Jordan for the United States Supreme Court, but by the time he could do so, Jordan's health problems prevented him from nominating her. Jordan later also suffered from leukemia. In 1988, Jordan nearly drowned in her backyard swimming pool while doing physical therapy, but she was saved by Earl, who found her floating in the pool and revived her. Jordan died at the age of 59 due to complications from pneumonia on January 17, 1996, in Austin, Texas. Topic: <laughs> Recognition and legacy. 1984, inducted into the Texas Women's Hall of Fame 1990, inducted into the National Women's Hall of Fame 1992, the Spingarn Medal from the NAACP 1993, the Elizabeth Blackwell Award from Hobart and William Smith Colleges 1994, the Presidential Medal of Freedom 
1995, the second ever female awardee of the United States Military Academy's Sylvanus Thayer Award her 1974 statement on the Articles of Impeachment regarding President Richard Nixon was listed as number 13 in American Rhetoric's Top 100 Speeches of the 20th Century listed by rank, her 1976 Democrat National Convention keynote address first major convention keynote speech ever by woman and first by African American was listed as number 5 in American Rhetoric's Top 100 Speeches of the 20th Century listed by rank. Topic. Namesakes in Texas The main terminal at Austin Bergstrom International Airport is named after Jordan. The airport also features a statue of Jordan by artist Bruce Wolfe. A boulevard in central Austin is named after Jordan. Several schools bear her name, including an elementary school in Odessa, Texas, and Austin, Texas, Barbara Jordan Early College Prep School, an elementary school in Richmond, Texas, Barbara C. Jordan Intermediate School, a middle school in Cibolo, Texas, and Barbara Jordan High School in Houston and the Barbara Jordan Institute for Policy Research at her undergraduate alma mater Texas Southern University. The Kaiser Family Foundation currently operates the Barbara Jordan Health Policy Scholars, a fellowship designed for people of color who are college juniors, seniors, and recent graduates as a summer experience working in a congressional office. Other honors In 2000, the Jordan-Rustin Coalition was created in Jordan's honor. The organization mobilized gay and lesbian African Americans to aid in the passage of marriage equality in the state of California. Along with Bayard Rustin, a civil rights leader and close confidant of Martin Luther King Jr., Barbara Jordan is remembered for her advocacy of progressive politics. According to its website, the mission of the JRC is to empower black same-gender loving, lesbian, gay, bisexual and transgender individuals and families in greater Los Angeles, to promote equal marriage rights and to advocate for fair treatment of everyone without regard to race, sexual orientation, gender identity, or gender expression. On March 27, 2000, a play based on Jordan's life premiered at the Victory Garden Theater in Chicago, Illinois. Titled Voice of Good Hope. Christine Thatcher's biographical evocation of Jordan's life played in theaters from San Francisco to New York. On April 24, 2009, a statue of Barbara Jordan was unveiled at the University of Texas at Austin, where Jordan taught at the time of her death. The Barbara Jordan statue campaign was paid for by a student fee increase approved by the University of Texas Board of Regents. The effort was originally spearheaded by the 2002-2003 Tappy class of the Texas Orange Jackets, the oldest women's organization at the university of Texas at Austin. In 2011, actor-playwright Jade Esteban Estrada portrayed Jordan in the solo musical comedy Icons, The Lesbian and Gay History of the World, Volume 5 which includes the song, Nancy's Eyes, sung by the character of Jordan with music and lyrics by Estrada. In 2011, the Barbara Jordan Forever stamp was issued. It is the 34th stamp in the Black Heritage series of U.S. stamps. In 2012, Jordan was inducted into the Legacy Walk, an outdoor public display which celebrates LGBT history and people. The Barbara Jordan Media Awards are given annually to media professionals and students who have produced material for the public which accurately and positively reports on individuals with disabilities, using people-first language and respectful depictions." There also is the Barbara Jordan Public Private Leadership Award. Gallery See also History of the African Americans in Houston List of African American United States Representatives Texas African American History Memorial, Texas State Capitol Women in the United States House of Representatives Topic. References Topic. External links United States Congress. Barbara Jordan ID, J000266. Biographical Directory of the United States Congress.
Jordan's statement on the articles of impeachment during the Nixon impeachment hearings in text and audio from AmericanRhetoric.com Jordan's 1976 Democratic National Convention keynote address in text and audio from AmericanRhetoric.com Jordan's 1992 Democratic National Convention address in text and audio from AmericanRhetoric.com Barbara Jordan, Governor of Texas for a Day, Program of Ceremonies, June 10, 1972, hosted by the Portal to Texas History Interview with Max Sherman, editor of Barbara Jordan, Speaking the Truth with Eloquent Thunder on Kaiser Network. Org Oral History Interviews with Barbara Jordan, from the Lyndon Baines Johnson Library The Texas Experience, Barbara Jordan presents Lyndon Baines Johnson, from the Texas Archive of the Moving Image Special Collections, Texas Southern University Barbara Jordan at Find a Grave